Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Lisa Frankenstein. I actually watched this a couple days ago at the AMC Screen Unseen. I was really rooting to watch this one. You know, the trailer was good. I wasn't crazy about the trailer. But then, you know, I was looking up who Diablo Cody was and who Zelda Williams was. And it's from the writer of Jennifer's Body, which is a great movie. Very underrated cult classic that has kind of had a resurgence in recent years. And, of course, the daughter of Robin Williams with Zelda Williams being the director behind this film. And, you know, I like Catherine Newton as an actor. I like Cole Sprouse as an actor as well. And so, really, all the elements of this movie has come together to be pretty much exactly what I like in a movie. I absolutely loved this film. And I watched it before the critical reaction has come out. And now, since I've seen, like, the, the other reviews of this movie and it being a fairly mixed, you know, reception coming out of this film. I feel like we're in another cult sensation in the making. I feel like this movie is going to have its fans. It's going to absolutely love this film like I did. And I'm excited to share with you everything that I liked about this film because it's a good one. And this will, of course, be a spoiler review. So if you have not seen Lisa Frankenstein, I highly recommend you go check it out, especially if you're a fan of, of Jennifer's body in particular, because I think this movie has a similar tone-ish, like the similar characters in this film. And it's just it's just a lot of fun. So let's just jump right into Lisa Frankenstein. So what is this film about? Well, essentially it follows our main character, Lisa, played by Catherine Newton, who is in a new family dynamic. Her mother was killed in a brutal axe murdering incident a few years prior, but her dad has moved on, married a new stepmother of hers, and she has a new stepsister, and this family dynamic is very weird and interesting, which I'll get into in a minute here, but she's very much a loner. Instead of going to school, going to parties, and drinking, doing all those things, she'd rather go to this local graveyard, abandoned graveyard over in the woods, and talk to this one grave of this one guy who she has no idea anything about him or his past life, as he did live in like the 1800s, and she has just normal conversations with him and wishes that she could be down there with him, which is a very sad and tragic, you know, character to follow at the beginning of this movie. But when lightning strikes this grave and Frankenstein rises from the ground and goes over to meet her, now you have this weird twisted love story that, again, is extremely over the top and goofy. And the dark comedy in this movie is just spot on. Do you like music? I have the cure. Ooh. Oh, not that kind of cure. <laughs> they can't make you better. I mean, they can, but like emotionally. Now, I will say the thing that I love most about this movie is Catherine Newton as Lisa. She is such a, she's having so much fun in this role. And I think of all the movies that I've seen her, and obviously I have the poster up for Freaky behind me. She was great in Freaky. She had a lot of fun in this type of role. And, you know, she was she was okay in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I didn't really have a problem with her in that film. And I, I'm excited to see her, you know, go out and hopefully like a Young Avengers movie. I think she can have a lot of fun in those sort of things but this is clearly going to be her most iconic role hopefully the role that's really going to just make her a star from here on out because she is so good in this movie because she has this like quietness to her at the beginning of the movie but as she evolves and becomes more and more twisted as a character and you can clearly tell she's having fun the costumes that she has throughout this entire movie i gotta give props to the costume designer of this film whoever they are you know i'm gonna look up their name megan mclaughlin is the costume designer of this film and really any sort of costume that's Catherine Newton is in in this entire film is just great. Again, the evolution of this character was one of the greatest parts about this film. And I also really like Cole Sprouse as the creature, this character that does not speak for entirely, like pretty much the entire movie until the very ending. But his looks and mannerisms and just grunts that he makes throughout this movie is so funny every single time that he's on screen and again the chemistry here between these two actors was really great even though you have Catherine Newton the one who is going to be talking pretty much non-stop throughout this entire movie and you have Cole Sprouse who doesn't say an entire word but their chemistry together on screen was was really solid but really at its core this movie is a coming of age story in the similar vein of that of like John Hughes movies from the 80s this movie very much has that sort of tone and feel to it and I've also heard a lot of people compare this to Edward Scissorhands I actually haven't seen Edward Scissorhands one of my blind spots in film but you know what if the shoe fits the shoe fits and I'm sure a lot of people are going to see that connection as well of course the Bride of Frankenstein this movie also has a lot of references to horror movies so many of them in fact that it's impossible to name them all one that I definitely realized and noticed was all the references to a trip to the moon which any girl who has a like glow-in-the-dark image of a trip to the moon on her closet door is somebody that I'd like to meet because that is just such an interesting person who would have that imagery in her room. But either way, there's a lot of horror references in this thing, that blend of tone between the John Hughes type of comedy to the dark twisted horror of like a Tim Burton movie and how that dark comedy kind of twists and turns its way through this movie is all great. I love 
all of that stuff. But I think the reason why I really love this movie is it went so much further than I thought it was going to go for a PG-13 movie because the premise of this movie, as it quickly turns out to be, is that, you know, the creature, played by Cole Sprouse, is missing a lot of body parts. You know, he's missing a hand at the beginning of the movie and he keeps on kind of grunting and motioning towards his hand as if he wants Lisa to get him a hand because you know, he wants one, he doesn't have one, he's also missing an ear as well, and you know, those jokes are kind of made at their first meeting here and there, and I was like, okay, maybe by the end of the movie he's going to get a hand or something like that, but no, quickly you find out that they're going to be on a murder spree, they're going to be killing all these characters that kind of wrong them in, in one sort of way or another throughout this movie in very brutal and over-the-top and comedic ways, the first of which is Carla Cugino's character who, as soon as she popped up on screen, I didn't know she was going to be in this film, I love her in all of Mike Flanagan's stuff, she she is a god-awful person in this movie. She is one of the most over-the-top and just evil, mustache-twirling stepmothers that I've ever seen in a film. Almost to a point where she was so over-the-top that she didn't fit the tone of this movie, even if the tone of this movie is fairly over-the-top. But, you know, I, I was really worried about this character because I was already annoyed with her. And if she stayed along for any longer than she was, I probably wouldn't have liked the direction this movie went. But she was the first one to die in this movie, which was very shocking. When the creature sneaks up behind her and just smacks her head and she falls into the ground, I was like, oh, I wonder how they're going to get out of this one. Because there's no way they're going to kill Carla Cugino in the first, like, 30 minutes of this movie. But then they pan down to her and there's blood pouring out on the carpet. And you're like, oh my god, I think she's dead. And then Cole Sprouse reaches down and cuts her ear off and puts it on his own face. That is a crazy moment in this film that completely shifts my perspective of what this movie was going to be. And I started thinking, oh, they're going to get this hand. And I was like, my mind kept on going. I was like, what if he's missing some other body parts? Obviously, this is a rom-com of sorts. What if, you know, he doesn't have a penis because he's been dead for so long? And I was like, there's no way the movie's going to go in that route. This is PG-13. They're not going to go that far. No, they go that far in this movie. And all the murders and all the deaths in this film are very fitting because, again, the evil stepmother is going to be the one that kind of starts off all the deaths in this film. You know, it's going to get the suspicion from the stepsister and from, you know, her dad and, and trying to get away with this situation and the, the I guess, the comedy that you get out of that situation, which is also very dark of her, sort of like, oh, she's still on her trip. It's fine, even though the stepsister is absolutely in shambles with her mother being gone and worried about her being missing and all this stuff, but there's a lot of funny and dark twisted jokes that are made at the expense of that character. And also there's another character who at one point is like a date rapey type character at a party scene with this weird creepy kid who loves movie directors, I guess. This person clearly is somebody in Zelda Williams' life or Diablo Cody's life who completely disturbed them in one way or another in their life. But this character is very creepy at the beginning of the movie and then of course when he pops back up at the end of the movie, he's kind of lured in in a similar way to Jennifer Wood in Jennifer's body. And of course they're gonna kill him in a very brutal way and take his hand because that was a thing that caused all the problems was his hand and they're gonna put it to better use now. And so they chop off his hand, they put him over in the, in the graveyard site to hide the bodies and they're gonna go off to kill the next next person and all throughout the entire movie Catherine Newton's character has this crush on this one guy in school and I think this part was a little predictable I was pretty sure that's you know the stepsister was going to be sleeping with him at some point of the movie and you're going to have that sort of like oh you know I thought you were really nice to me because you know the stepsister was very nice to her she was the one person who tried to have conversations with her trying to make this weird family situation work throughout the entire movie even if she was a little bit disingenuous at times or like feeling like she was disingenuous at times I feel like there was a sweetness to her character but but she was still bad enough of a character to sleep with the guy who you know Lisa was clearly saying that she liked throughout the entire beginning of this movie and that's when you get to probably the funniest scene in the entire movie again this movie goes a lot further with its rating than i was expecting it to because there's a lot of blood splatter in this scene where they kill this boy that's you know lisa had a crush on throughout the entire movie and of course when they cut off his dick and it goes flying in the air and the the shadow that they have projected onto the wall of this entire scene is so ridiculous like it's flopping around like crazy it is such it's an image to see i think that's an image that i'll see in my nightmares forever but it was very funny because for like the next 10 minutes you know they're walking around carrying the thing in like a rag that's all bloody and it's 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 ridiculous this movie has this dark twisted sense of humor that i again maybe that's why the critical reception i haven't read any other reviews but i'm sure people are either disturbed or just like they, this humor doesn't work for them I don't know, I thought this was hilarious. But then it all leads to the sacrifice that Lisa has to make because, you know, she didn't realize that this this character, this creature that has been following her around throughout the entire movie is the love of her life, essentially. This is the person that would literally cut somebody's dick off for her in order to, you know, do the deed at the end of this movie, which 
God, that's so funny. But like, he's the sweetest guy ever. Even if he can't express it in words, he really was there for her this entire time to listen to her and all the moments where she needed to go on rants or go and, and just let it all out throughout the entire movie. And so they eventually go over to the the tanning salon that's been shocking him back to life. That's it's essentially the plot element where as soon as they get a body part, they have to go into this, this tanning salon and get in there and zap him. And then it'll kind of like melt him together. He'd be able to use that severed hand instead of it just being a dead hand, you know, sewn onto his body. And so once you get to the end of the movie and once they, you know, are at the point where they're going to get caught no matter what, everything has led to a point where all these police and all the, the people are converging to find the murder that's been killing all these people. She has to sacrifice herself at the end of the movie. And honestly, this was a very Romeo and Juliet type of like tragic ending to this love story that I thought was really beautiful at a lot of times. And I think one of the more interesting character beats for Lisa's character throughout this entire movie was, you know, her saying, oh, I wish I could be with you, you know, to the grave at the beginning of the movie to, you know, the creature's grave. And, you know, he took that as, oh, he came back to life in the magic because, you know, he thought that she wanted to be with him in life. But no, she wanted to be with him in death, which is again, a very dark idea and a very tragic idea to have in this movie. But by the end of it, it's something truly beautiful that is very unique to this movie. At least I haven't seen other movies that might, you know, you might have connections to this, but it's very much a Romeo and Juliet times like Frankenstein, like mashup that they have throughout this movie. And I, I just, I really liked how this movie went and how it ended. And by the end of the movie, seeing both of them on that bench as corpses, essentially, you know, finally being together in this new life that they have, having found each other after all this time, I found it to be a very beautiful story. And I felt it all kind of coalesced in just a very funny and entertaining movie that's, if you're into these type of movies, if you're into that dark humor that this movie has, I think you're going to absolutely love it. I will say in terms of any flaws that I have with this movie, I think maybe the pacing of this movie, I think every single time you're in a situation where like, okay, I think something needs to happen right about now in order for me to stay interested in this film, something always happens right around that time because, you know, the first act happens, I was feeling like, okay, something needs to happen here pretty soon or else I'm going to be kind of annoyed with this like, you know, stepmother character, but then she dies right there and the movie kind of shifts into that direction. So every single time I felt like the movie was kind of taking a little bit too long to get to the next thing, they did the next thing to keep me interested and I think that the pacing in this movie I think it could have been edited down maybe like five ten minutes to just be a little tighter to be a little quicker and snappier in this movie I think that is some of the growing pains as a first-time director with Zelda Williams I think she did a great job with this being her directorial debut I think it is very well put together again the way it's crafted the production design the lighting the costume design everything about this movie is so polished and so great and I think that Zelda Williams had a clear vision for this movie I just wish it had a little snappier of a pace but besides Besides that, I'm very excited to see what Zelda Williams does with her next film, along with Diablo Cody writing more movies like this, like Jennifer's Body. I know they're never appreciated by the critical, you know, audiences that watch this movie, which is, again, I'm really shocked that the Rotten Tomato score is as low as it is because I had a blast watching this movie. But for those people who like these type of movies, for those who like Jennifer's Body, and for those who have that twisted, dark sense of humor that love these, like, weird horror twisted love stories that is perfectly timed for Valentine's Day, you're going to absolutely love this film. And I cannot wait to talk about this film with other people because, you know, I saw it a little bit early and I'm just excited to hear your thoughts on it. So comment down below what your thoughts are of Lisa Frankenstein. Did you love it as much as I did? Or are you with the critics thinking that this movie is a bit of a miss for you? But either way, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. Uh, if you did enjoy my thoughts on it, and if you want to see more reviews just like this one, I have a review out for a bunch of Sundance movies that I watched over this past week, and along with all other movie reviews that I'm going to have on this channel as more releases come out throughout the year. And so, again, comment down below, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, see more reviews just like this one. I hope to see you all in my next one. Mm -hmm.